I'm the only one. You put it Who in the chat. here recognizes that voice? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yay. Erica loves bank feeds. Vicky loves them. I use bank feeds, but the clients don't. I don't want my clients using them. And when they do, I want to get after them. I was <laughs> just going to say kill them, but yeah. Hey, Linda, hold on. Hello, everybody. We have Linda and Maurice here. Linda's jumping in because she has. I couldn't stay away, Matthew. Exactly. Maurice, please come on with us. Bring your video back on. We thank you for joining us today. Hello, everybody. So thank you, everybody, for joining us for a special edition of weekly sessions. I should make sure to let everybody know Maurice and I have been long time friends. I've actually known Maurice longer than Linda. I know. And it's Maurice's fault. We met. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> you knew it was coming, right? Exactly. It is Maurice's fault. Now it does feel like it's been longer with Linda, but in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> today's uh, episode, we're going to be talking about basically everything bank feeds. Uh, I've always felt Bank feeds is something I've been very, very passionate about for a very long time. Um, again, Maurice, I think it's kind of your fault on that one. You yep. deep into that deep rabbit hole. Um, and I feel like there's always an issue where just a lot of people don't really know enough about how bank feeds work. They have started to understand a bit better, but like the problem mostly with bank feeds is the bank itself. But before we go any further there, let me share my little slide deck here. And then Maurice, I would love for you to actually share with everybody about you. I know you, but let's make sure they know you. Sure. So Maurice, tell us about yourself pretty please. Sure. Well, it's a pleasure me, uh, to be hosted here, Matt and Linda. It's, you know, like, like you said, we've known each other forever. And you know, Linda, we've known each other. So you know, great to be uh, a part of this. Uh, a bit of background about myself. I uh, got my MBA from Johns Hopkins. I lived in Northern California for a good couple of years in the San Jose area, worked at a high tech company and uh, did data analytics and that kind of thing. And then moved down to LA, so I'm in LA right now, and uh, focused on FinTech, really building financial applications. And when it comes to bank feeds, I kind of specialized in that. I worked with all the major data providers I worked with um, Yodely, I worked with Plaid, I worked with Bio Accounts, I worked with TD, um, I worked with Finicity. Uh, I worked with basically all the, uh, all the major data aggregators out there. So I know how bank feeds work. Um, I understand how they feed into QuickBooks as an example. I know how they feed into Zero, et cetera. So this is kind of my specialty in terms of bank feeds. And so, um, you know, uh, yeah, I kind of specialize in that, in that space, and that's where I'm going. So, uh, matter, matter of fact, one of the ones, the companies you actually did work for back in the day was uh, Bench.co, I believe, right? Um, yeah, I did some stuff with Bench, and that where I um, integrated uh, the bank feed service at that time was Yodely into, into Bench. So when they first, first, first started up, I met Ian Crosby, a uh, nice guy in, uh, in New York, and um, that's when they first came out with the idea. And so we helped implement the the uh, bank feed integration into their software. Been you know, I tried out to be on this advertisement, but apparently they just didn't like me enough. I really <laughs> wanted to be the bench.co guy, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, here are some of the other companies. I mean, again, I, I know about your background. I know all the stuff that you've been involved with and it, you've worked with a lot of different larger companies, uh, yeah. database, so forth. Um, and again, you've, I always tell you, but thank you. I mean, you've taught me so much along the way as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So do you remember how we, you and I came to actually connect and meet? Yeah, you wanted to to start automating stuff for Parkway. Yeah. And you're looking for you're looking for different services out there and how to automate and get bank statements and check images quickly uh, for the for Parkway. Yeah, I, remember, I definitely remember that conversation. And then obviously we you were the guy that breaks everything. So you <laughs> They figured out how to, to make the software work and where it doesn't work and improve it. So, um, you know, Matt Matt became our our you know, our accountant and resident technology expert. And Matt, in my eyes, is one of the best people when it comes to uh, technology. Maureen, how long ago was that? Because when you have to put it into perspective, if 
Matthew was trying to automate things. This is before things were kind of automated. Like what you know today was not what you were. No, no, this was not back even close, right? 2015, when, when things were um, not as, as progressive as they are today, when things with bank websites are still, you know, still out there, but they're nowhere close. You know, what yeah. FinTech was nowhere close where it is today. The amount of investment in FinTech then was, you know, not as big. Like today, for example, 15% of all um, investment money in the world is, is, is invested in FinTech. It's wow. insane. FinTech, that's wow. an insane amount of money. And, um, you know, the data providers is the source of all FinTech products. Like can you build a financial technology products if you can't have access to banks. So, you know, bank feeds is now becoming cornerstone. And um, you follow the news, you know, Chase is investing in it because Chase has uh, been really been hitting Jamie Dimon's really on top of things. And we got to get invest in FinTech and uh, B of A is really getting into it as well. So, um, you know, financial technology, bank feeds is, is the way things are going. I remember when we first started talking about this stuff, like I kept saying bank feeds, bank feeds is going to be the keyword. Like, I think I have like three different domain names for websites yeah, like mybankfeeds.com and such, right? It's like, I don't know, because people just didn't get it. Um, and, and something else you touched base on is, is kind of where I want to go next is understanding it is that transformation of nobody really paid attention to what bank feeds were. You know, they started off QuickBooks desktop and way back in the day, companies had to banks had to pay into it to actually be able to connect and pull transactions in to get an intu.bid number the bane of our existence basically um and nowadays so what kind of happened from there is you had this fintech bubble that just blew up and everybody started doing this and everybody was trying to get into the banks to get the data to do stuff and the banks got tired of it so this is what kind of you know, I want to pull away the veil, as I say, about bank feeds of what's happening and, and talk about like the differences between, you know, what is a, um, if you will, a front door access versus like an API access when it comes yeah. to. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me, let me, you know, so here's an yeah, example of, of checks and, and scripting. There, there, there are two ways to, to get access to the banks today. So um, remember, the data is being held on the bank servers on the back end of, of the, the banks. And, and um, the traditional way and, and still the most popular way is essentially screen scraping. So that, and I can tell you from what uh, Intuit does and from uh, what you know, Zero does and all the other products that they're Plaid included and everyone, you know, what Wave uses, um, Wave Accounting, um, the majority, the, the vast majority is screen scraping. Yep. Um, that's because the banks are basically, they, they don't have a, an API or front end door into their system. And so that causes a lot of problems. You know, it's, it's a tough balance because banks want to protect security because essentially you're, you're mimicking a browser and you're, you're going through the, you're going in literally through the front door. You're, you're, you're going to the website and mimicking um, Human interaction, human movement, right? So yeah, you're mimicking human movement. So the banks are trying to make sure that you're not a, a robot or a bot, as they say. And so, um, you know, that's a tricky part. You know, so that's the traditional way. And then, um, and that causes a lot of problems. There's technicalities in, in how to screen scrape. The 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 way banks are moving now is to realize that look, we've got to, it. The data belongs to the uh, the consumer, and the consumer wants to share their data. That's fine. And so banks are moving to what's called OAuth or API connection, where you're connecting directly into the bank. The bank is saying, um, essentially pay us or subscribe to our service, and then we'll let you in and we'll let you in securely. So that's the way things are going. But it's, you know, open banking is what it's termed today in Europe. Huge in Europe, huge in, in Europe. Europe. It's, it's by it's law. law. It's, it's the law. law. In Europe, it's the law. In the US, it's not the law and it's gonna be closed for a long time. You think well, that's and that's because, because there's so many banks. I'm sorry, what? Because, you think it's because there's so many banks. I mean, yep. you know, like you look at Canada, they only have like three or something like that. Is that right? Sense? So, right. I mean, right. In Europe, it's a, it's a lot less banks and et cetera. Um, and, you know, banks just don't want to pay for I mean, there's a burden on them. They have to pay for the API, they got to manage security, et cetera. They also want to hold tight the data. I mean, obviously, they don't want to share their, their data with anybody because once it's open, everybody technically uh, that the consumer wants to share with can see it, so. 
Yeah, it's and so to kind of go back to the presentation here wise and what, what I was basically trying to show here, I want everybody to kind of envision this. The last time you went, you logged into a financial institution, credit card companies are the worst with this, right? You go, you do your login, every click of the mouse, when you're talking about screen scraping, you're trying to basically program that exact same thing. And how many times you go log in and all of a sudden they're doing a pop-up that shows you, would you like to get another card? Or here's a special 5% discount, or here's a blah, 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 blah. Any change like that is something that actually breaks that feed, like if that programming happens and makes these things like fail time and time again. Anything will break it. You know, if you change the word from log in to sign in as an example, that'll break it. If the browser doesn't load so fast, if, you know, any connectivity problems, any change, any change, basically, um, um, you know, the, yeah, they mess with it. essentially. So, uh, you know, you try to build some AI into the, into the technology to kind of handle it, but um, it's not a simple task. So there, I remember along the journey when we were working together, and this is kind of the stuff we were talking about right now, just, uh, you know, the idea of how do you get in, whether it's multi-factor authentication, whether you have these token generators, which are the worst, um, right. you know, numbers, so forth. Um, towards the end, I'll share a tip that I have on ways to get this stuff to work really nicely for you. But all of this stuff causes issues for us, which I call factoring the bank feed, you know, challenge, which... Um, do you remember, you're the one that taught me about this a while, quite some time back, Wells Fargo was really guilty with this stuff. They were actively trying to kick people out. And there's a point in time where they changed the language on the memo, because um, a memo will have 32 characters that'll come through. And they put pre-approved authorized purchase on XX forward slash XX date. And if you looked at it, that was because it squeezed out anything of value just to, to mess with people. Now, if you went and downloaded it straight from Wells Fargo, it wasn't there. So there was that one. And then you knew, you told me another one where they did some like um, screen scraping bombs, right? Can you share some of the, the yeah, stories so on that? Like, for example, Wells Fargo, uh, they've got all these techniques, you know, all these strategies to, to detect like all banks, but Wells Fargo is, is really good at it in terms of detecting. And um, they put some, you know, they injected some Korean language stuff in there that we've seen before. I mean, um, you know, Make make a long story short. I mean, the banks are really good about protecting the security. I mean, it's you know their responsibility. And so, um, when it comes to screen scraping and pulling data for the bank feeds, they make it they make it really difficult um, to work with. And you know, all the more reason to, to push API the direct connections. But it just kind of gives you an, an understanding of why screen scrape. You know, why getting bank feeds is not the easiest. You know, it it works when it works, but sometimes it does break, and we, we try to handle it as quickly as possible. But um, you know, you're working kind of against the bank. You know, they, they also measure how many times you've logged in. If they see you log in, like PNC has a policy, you can only log in, um, you know, a couple of times a day and that's it. You know, they see you log in a few times, they automatically shut you down. So, do. you know, <laughs> trying to, trying to, trying to, yeah, well, obviously let me know about that. I don't know why the, the attorneys love PNC. I don't they, know if they, they get a deal. They these rules. Yeah, so I just see Tanya says she, Tanya Schulte says she wants to have a copy of this show so she can just hand it off to clients. Because <laughs> maybe make like a piece in there where where Maurice is explaining it all, so we can just because they get mad when it breaks because we're like it broke, and then you ask them to fix it if it's direct connect. Can you fix it? And then like why is this break? And then of course it's into its fault <laughs> usually. <laughs> so actually, I want to ask everybody a quick question in, in, that's watching in the comments. You know, both Facebook, Zoom. Wonder please add in to the comments, which banks are you having the most challenges with nowadays? Banks, credit cards, which ones are not staying connected? Um, here's a chance to just vent about the different institutions. Cause we want to know like where the difficulties are, right? Yeah, as, and just as a, a, one more thing. I remember, uh, I think it was about a year ago or a year and a half ago, Wells Fargo on QuickBooks basically forced everyone to re-add their, their password, et cetera. Um, and that, you know, that's kind of a pain getting, you know, your, your clients to go back in and add their password, et cetera. And the reason for that, just so you know, is that Wells Fargo said, okay, we're changing our policy. If you want to connect to our bank, you got to tunnel through our, our integration. API. So, yeah. You know, Intuit had the, the big headache of convincing everybody that uses QuickBooks to go in and re-add the password because now Wells Fargo has changed the rules. And 
banks can do that anytime. Bank of America is doing it in the process doing now. And you'll see with more and more banks and expect this, expect, absolutely expect yeah. banks and credit card companies to start forcing um, uh, consumers to re-authenticate. They'll break it and they'll say, okay, you have to log in and they'll track it. And you got to sign a, a you know, you got to agree to the new terms and conditions, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. But that's, that is to be expected. You're going to have to do it. So cap, this reminds me of Capital One, and I think it was back in 2018, you know, probably 2019, Capital One held everybody hostage. Yeah. They disconnected into it, zero, uh, everything, all, they, they canceled everything for like three, four months. The only way to do anything is you had to actually go log in. And as accountants, you know, this is the bane of our existence is trying to collect data, deposit images, check images, which is where we'll, we'll talk about ledger sync in just a little bit here, which solves all that, um, that it's been the bane of the existence, right? Yeah. Capital One at the moment, if you, they, they provide a, a direct tunnel into their system, Capital One, just to pick on them, they are not releasing bank statements. They'll let you access their transactions but they're they're blocking access to statements. I have no re I have no idea why, but you know they're kind of the driver, and and so more pressure is being added um, to push the banks to to release data. Well, so accessing that's another kind of an important thing to ask is when we're talking about accessing data transactions, we're talking ones and zeros. That's something like an API can easily you can transfer across. Documents is a different thing. It's not the same. It's not as easy. Like they don't have a special call that says, please give me all of the check images. Thank you. Right. Or statements. So you have to have this hybrid type system to try to accomplish this. Right. Yeah. I mean, why, why block statements? What's the purpose? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, that when the bank builds an API, they, they're, they're going to allow you to, to see whatever they want. So like, for example, the bell, the, the bank of America, the Wells Fargo, um, you know, tunneling in and, you know, and, um, and that's why you see QuickBooks starting to offer, you know, a few banks because uh, for statements, because those banks have allowed it, but there are banks and the vast majority of banks don't, they'll say you can access our transactions, um, but you're not, we're not going to give you bank statements. Capital One is, is the one that's notorious right now. Mm -hmm. Well, they will not give you access to statements. I have no idea why. I don't, I don't know why. It makes no sense. What institutions have you found are the easiest from your perspective, which makes it easier for us, which are the best to work with? Like if you had to say, like, you're going to have the best chance and best success of staying connected and getting what you need with such and such, who would that be? So I had an example. I'll give you an example today. I'm working with a CPA firm that's dealing with a small credit union on the East Coast. And this account has a lot of business with this credit union. And basically, we're able to get access and data, we're not gonna have any problems. So it's it's hard to say, I mean, working with, with a Wells Fargo Bank of America, I mean, today, um, like Bank of America, Wells Fargo is great because there's a direct API, um, mm -hmm. but um, you know, the smaller credit unions are also good um, at this point. It, you know, uh, it just depends. The, the simplest answer is if the bank provides an API, a direct tunnel, um, like Wells Fargo, B of A, um, Chase, you know, it works because you're accessing their, 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 their infrastructure directly. But um, ones that don't offer it, then the smaller credit unions are usually easier to work with. So if we were to, uh, let's jump forward a little bit here now and talk about the solution right towards this. Tell us a little bit more about LedgerSync, um, how LedgerSync came to be. Um, I always love this image something that a long time ago I helped kind of create, right? Yeah, but tell us about the story of, of LedgerSync time-wise, everything else. Yeah, this was back, uh, gosh, in 2012, 2013, I remember exactly. I had to, or 2011, yeah. I had to, um, um, I did my taxes, which was the biggest mistake. I did it once and never again. And I must have tripped something with the IRS because I got an audit. And I ran to an account saying, okay, what do I do? And the audit was I had to prove that I had um, they wanted to see a copy of a check. And I said, okay, no problem. I'll just go to bofa.com and I'll just go download the check. And lo and behold, uh, the banks hold the checks for a limited amount of time. And so it was very difficult to get a copy of the check. Eventually I was able to get it, but it wasn't easy. 
And um, you know, I spoke with an accountant. I spoke, I started, is this common? He says, yeah, this happens all the time. You know, we're always trying to hustle and try to get uh, copies of checks and statements and that kind of thing. It, you know, getting access to the bank information is not easy. And so that was the idea. And I, at that time, I was also working with bank feeds. And I noticed there's nothing really for the accounting space. There's a lot of stuff for wealth management, stuff for like mint.com type of solutions, but really geared towards accountants, there's not really much out there. And so that was the idea of Ledger Sync. Uh, I personally think it was brilliant, right? So um, kind of fast forwarding, I like to always, I, I put this on here myself, not Maurice, that 2016, I started to try to break it all. Um, now, <laughs> along the journey right it's it's been a fun time playing you know working all this stuff together helping with your clients i've met a lot of different accounts actually a lot of accounts i've met first because of ledger sync kind of acting as a technical liaison if you will um yep. 2017 uh you guys had the account tax award for uh consumer what was it it's consumer's best product yeah something like that right correct yep um and then now so there, there are probably a lot of people that have heard of Ledger Sync and may have used it in the past. And there's been a major evolution of the technology, but I want to really kind of focus on this next new chapter. Because in 2019, you started to rebuild the platform, trying to make yeah. it faster, everything else. Um, tell us about that part of your journey and, and what's coming up. Yeah, the, 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 the code, um, essentially the, the back end, we, we started to refactor it and so, okay, we need to really make things, we need to make some adjustments there. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of it's just getting too much and um, the banks really start to clamp down, clamp down on access levels, et cetera. And essentially, um, you know, Chase, I think was the first and you, you just kind of read <laughs> Jamie Diamond always saying, you know, we're not gonna allow aggregators in and you gotta play by rules, gotta play by rules. And Chase was kind of the first one that, that kind of led this. Um, and so we started partnering with, with a company called Finicity that's now owned by MasterCard. And we came really close with these guys. And um, they, you know, you're dealing with MasterCard, they, they have the access levels, they work with the banks directly, they got the relationships. And so we really started to focus and work with, with, with um, uh, the team at, at Finicity MasterCard in terms of the data access. And so we kind of transitioned from um, you know, screen scraping and that kind of thing more to working with a company like MasterCard that, has the relationships with the banks and the breakages, um, you know, have gone down significantly less, and um, just because of those relationships. Now, Linda, so for you, obviously being the accountant, law lab um, specialist, and doing everything with legal, um, you were telling me before about the importance of documentation, right, for trust accounts. Can you kind of chime in on that? How does like yeah, teach well, me? Okay. With all, with all the trust accounts, obviously, we have to track every single penny that comes into that trust account, the IOLTA account. And for us in Florida, we have to have the copies of both sides of the check. And if we have an easy way to get that, that's helpful because a lot of times the attorneys just get so busy working like you do, get busy working in your job. And then we're, you know, they either, it's either on them to keep the copy or if I can attach it to a, a, a transaction, that's beautiful because if there's ever a bar audit, I can pull it up and they, they want to see the check that was part of that. You've got all the data there. So it's really, it's, it's a real bonus to have that ability because most of the banks, I try to think, I was trying to think before, like how many banks actually give me copies of checks? Um, not, uh, you have to actually log in to get them. It's not simple to gather. So for sure, um, I would say not many. <laughs> oh, so how do you and banks also, they, they limit. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Bank, I think it's only like three months. That they give you know, yes, they do. Yeah, you're right. You can look right. back. Is only three months. Some banks are, are from the beginning of time. And, but, you yeah, know, keep, keep in mind that it's not, you know, um, it's, a, it's a cost for the banks to store all this data. And so at some point, they're going to say, you know what, we're just going to archive it. And, you know, when you need it, you'll need it. Because if there's a cost to hold it, you know, make it available, you have to, be, you know, you have to pay people to make sure that it's accessible, et cetera, the storage costs and security costs. So from the bank's perspective, you know, if it's a check written a couple months ago, like they just want to get rid of it. They just want to throw it off and archive it somewhere else. And when you need it, you need it. And our goal is let's pull it in and, and store all that information. So when you need it, you have it right there. And so I'd love to know it. from, oh, sorry, uh, real quick. Just, <laughs> Oh, Laurie no. <laughs> Laurie Simner saying that PNC charges you to view the checked image. To view it? To view it. 
Uh, get a different yeah. bank. Yeah, exactly. That's that's crazy. Um, but for us as accountants too, Maurice, for us, right? It saves us time if we can see the check image, right? So we're not having to put it in the ask, get the client because you're like you're trying to tell them don't write checks, but they all do, and then we that saves us time. So time, money. Yes, <laughs> so. Absolutely, I mean, that's kind of the idea. You can attach it to your transactions, organize, etc. Oh, well, and we haven't talked about yet. Also, deposit detail. So yeah. that's another very very big one, and not. Keep in mind, not all financial institutions offer deposit detail. Some offer like they break out images, some don't, some break and they only show you the slip and that's it. So all of those are different variations you have to keep in mind. Um, so out of everybody, I wanted to ask everybody who here is actually like, who has to collect these images, the check images and deposit detail for all of their clients? Uh, put in the comments, let us know. And if you don't, how are you getting it? Like, are, what are you doing? Send over a spreadsheet and they have to fill it out? I'd love to know more about that as well. Um, uh, my team goes into that we have the accounts and they take a snapshot of it because most of them aren't, they don't come through like a Dex or a Hub Doc sometimes, depending yeah. on bank. A lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the law firms have now switched over to smaller banks, which don't break as much. They're a little bit more, more stable sometimes, but um, yeah, sometimes they don't give you what you need. Now, Marie, so a lot of credit unions, if I remember correctly, not everyone, are, they're not all done this way, but there's a lot of templated credit union, like bank, the back end of the banks are, it's a template. So they're not too different. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, for example, like Fi service is a, a back end provider for yeah. a lot of um, a lot of online banking. Jack Henry is another common one. There's there's services out there for smaller credit unions. They don't have the IT infrastructure um, to pay for you know, you know, Bank of America, for example. They've got a whole team. They have a whole server system. They have security. They, <laughs> they have all that. But a small credit union with like, you know, five, six, eight, ten branches. You know, they they rather just outsource it. So there's a lot of these um, providers out there that just basically provide an online bank. You, they customize it, and but if, essentially it's the same back end. Beautiful. So uh, again, Finicity is you started working with Finicity. Right. Uh, Finicity actually started to. Um, oh, what am I trying to say here? They were acquired, like you said, by Mastercard. And that has been just recently as in March, you're now in alignment and working with MasterCard on Ledger Sync. And uh, now there's this great opportunity for you to refocus some energy on building out certain connections. And I know you've been talking about, like you wanna know from everybody, what are the institutions, like which ones do you, are, are people needing the most and what other kind of data sets are they looking for also to try to make it easier for accountants? Yeah, that, that's really important because now I've got access, like senior level access to the folks at, at MasterCard and, and working with these guys. And so this is a value add that we can bring above, say, QuickBooks or Zero, whatever, because we they work directly. And it's like, I, like you said, it's not just about the traditional banks, et cetera. Like um, I've been hearing a lot more like Venmo for business as an example, oh, right? Yeah. Apple Pay. Um, we've got one that that does that specializes in the, in the restaurant and accounting firm that that's growing really fast in the restaurant business. They want access to Uber Eats and Dash, DoorDash, and all this other stuff, right? So the 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 data and the gig economy is kind of expanding it. But um, you know, we want to know everything, and I want to be able to get access to everything because, um, like, like I said, you know, it, uh, it's not the traditional credit cards anymore. Like people are using Venmo. Everybody uses Venmo today yeah. to do payments, and that's kind of like. The way things are going for 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 business, so Venmo for business. So I'm just picking that as an example, but I want to know, um, you know, a common one also is Amazon Merchant, right? Yes. Getting, yeah. Amazon, getting uh, access to all that um, statements on on Amazon. So um, whatever the heck, just to be completely blunt, whatever the heck you want in terms of access to data, I want to know about because I want to be able to work with the folks at Mastercard and say, okay, let's go get this data. Nice. So I figured now's a good time. Um, I want to jump in and be able to kind of show what we've got going on in, you know, give a quick tutorial of what Ledger Sync does, but really the intent will be for them to reach out. They can schedule up demo with you, so forth. Um, so let me share my screen here again. Wait a minute, isn't Amazon like always office expense? 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, IRS that. regulations say yes, absolutely. <laughs> so <laughs> now for everybody who's watching uh, uh, online as well, so the, the slide deck itself today, there's additional information inside here, different tips and tricks and such that I added in that if you click in, I actually for bank feed rules, everything else for QuickBooks Online, Click the image, it'll take you to a blog. It's a three-piece blog I've done. So if you're interested in more of that type of stuff, go download the PDF. It links, gives you more details, um, but we will save some of that time for you guys now and jump into kind of what's cool with what we can do. <laughs> so I've, I've got Ledger Sync pulled up version 2.0, which, you know, love the look of it, everything else. Um, you know, yeah. tell me, you, Tell me where I should go, or you kind of guide the the. Uh, tell me what you want to tell about Ledger Sync, and yeah, I, can... I I mean, I don't want to go into full blown demo. Better to schedule, but essentially, what we're working with um, uh, Mastercard, etc., is, is to pull in the the account information. So on the left hand side, uh, in in yeah, there is all the clients. Basically, go in. You can invite your clients. Um, one thing we're, we've changed about Ledger Sync that is important that I know is a pain is to getting clients to sign in and create a password, et cetera. So we've changed things around where we're doing pretty much almost everything by, by text messaging. So all the interactions with, with clients are now through nice. text. So you can invite a client via text. They can add their bank. Um, you know, they click on a link, it opens up Ledger Sync, et cetera, um, on the text. Um, yeah, or they click on, on statements and yeah, they have a whole selection. Yeah, through it, through it, yeah. Now I'll bring up this screen over here and um, don't, don't click on that, click on don't fix issues. That's fine. But this, is, this is a test account. Um, yep. so well, so if you were adding a different account, this is basically trying to connect because I was logged into it. This would also pull up a menu um, uh, where you can add new institutions for new clients. Everything else is what you, right. we were trying to show you really. Right. right. So you just click on the, the um, on one of the accounts or the calculator. Yep. So the calculator here is our transactions. There's a tab for transactions. Uh, the book is your statements. And then the next one over are your check images that pull up from different uh, links, right? So the gold. The transactions, if you click on the book, you'll see the, the bank statements. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can export the data to, to QuickBooks or whatever it is. Um, QuickBooks, OFX, or CSV. So QuickBooks Online or Desktop, both would work. These is a QBO versus OFX, standard CSV, of course. Um, so absolutely, you can do that. You can, so what's nice with this, especially in a QuickBooks desktop environment, is one of the things I always love. If you're going to take, you can export all the transactions, do it by a section of time, and you'll be able to export and import those into QuickBooks Desktop. So each month as you're doing an update, you just grab what you need pretty much, right? Right. Exactly. Filtering capability, uh, statements, like you were saying, sorry to cut you off there. Yep. Um, all of your statements you can grab, uh, click, pull it up right away. And my, my PDF thing doesn't show up, but it just by hovering, it kind of gives you the look of it. So you have all of your different accounts. You can filter by each of the accounts as well to get it more streamlined and specific into it. Um, and then the check images as well. Oh, the, 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 oh, thank yeah. you. Um, so check images basically come through and you're able to scroll up, down through that part of it. Um, not gonna stay on the checks for too long there just because of fancy information. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, I love the fact that with the check images, this was a big, big part for me. There, there was another competitor that would try to pull these images, which they don't seem to work very well anymore at all, mm -hmm. but you would do one check at a time. And I didn't really care about that. So we're always using QuickBooks online. I'd have my two monitors, we would pull up Ledger Sync on one side, we have QuickBooks Online on the other one, and we'd be able to scroll through and we're updating, da 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 boom, da 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 boom, da 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 boom, and go through super, super quick to update names, categories, that kind of stuff, um, super, super fast. Um, but you also have, Maurice, uh, it does, you hope, sorry, what I'm trying to say here, it connects to cloud environments as well, right, to back up. Uh, what do you mean? Oh yeah, I mean to, to store the data. Yes, yeah, so we deposit the data to um, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, Sharefile, and, and soon to be added as Box. We have it. Set oh, up. nice. So we're doing, doing Box.com as well. Katrina, did you hear that Box? We were talking about that. You wanted that? See, that was just for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now, if with Sharefile, 
uh, previously, I know you were you were working on the ability to try to like map for certain clients to where in Sharefile it would go. Um, uh, is that still something that's on the the product roadmap? Yeah, it's or? on the product roadmap. So we got we got to get that out. Uh, other benefits, of course, of Ledger Sync, and then really everybody, I, I strongly suggest you can set up and do a full demo with their team to to really get all the nitty gritty. But you can also go in, you can set up employee access. Um, so with employee access, you can define who is going to actually have access and to which accounts. Um, so not you don't have to worry about every single employee seeing every single thing. Um, you've got your client status updates. You can see if there are connections that there are issues with, because again, the, the key thing with anything bank feeds, this is not a set it and leave it ever. It needs to be like when you explain it with clients, the intention of doing this stuff is to try to set up to where it becomes easier and more efficient to not have to bug them at all. But occasionally they will have to participate in this sport called their accounting. So they have to, they've got to be around for it. And they do that right, what, right before tax time. Oh, absolutely. Let me show you one quick thing and, and um, maybe we'll uh, sure. uh, go back to the screen there and um, uh, just pick a, another client, uh, the one under it maybe. I want to show you what a broken one, what we do. Okay, great. So you see that these are broken ones. It says ask the client to fix. Mm -hmm. So what we've done here is because we know Every time you make a phone call to a client, it's like a it's not going to be a one minute um, call. Like let's mm -hmm. say the, the, the client changed their, their password or there's a token. Yep. So we, what we did is we click on this button, add ask client to fix. It will send a text message to the um, I don't know if it's set up here, but it will send a text message to the client, and the client just clicks on the link uh, on the text message and they just fix it on their phone. And that's that's amazing. Oh, that's you never have to call the client because it's never going to be a one minute call. You know that. Never. It's never a no. one minute call. It's always, you know, you, the, the, and then the whole discussion begins. So here, you know, they change their, their password. They, they click on the link on their phone. They fix it through a text message and you're done. That's it. Nice. Um, so list of support institutions. Now, um, a big, big part of this for everybody always is it's going to be, I, I guess the right way to say it is the check images and the statements. That is the magic secret sauce on top of all of the transactions. Not all institutions are available for check images. So again, this is why we're wanting to get this feedback of what are the important ones for you, because it requires a lot of coding, team support, everything else to make it um, to work. So which are the, like, name the, the biggest banks that are, are available for checks at this time. B of A, Wells Fargo, BB and T, um, um, M and T Bank. I'm just rattling off the top of my head. Um, SunTrust. Uh, sometimes um, we just did First Citizens. Um, I think those. I think just from the top of my head, those, those are the. Uh, oh, TD Bank. Um, uh, those are the major ones. Regions Bank as well. Beautiful, and. I see we have a comment also real quick, which I'm going to take as, um, so Tom, you were asking, does it have rules like QBO? Uh, there's another application out there that's known as <laughs> Vendor Sync, which actually pairs very nicely, shameless plug, with Ledger Sync to take the transactions, pull it in, and you can use rules for QuickBooks Desktop, right? So do um, you remember when I tried to sell you the idea, which is how uh, Vendor Sync came about? Yeah, you're supposed to do it. <laughs> So, um, do a segment on that. Uh, what's that? Would you do a segment? Do another, uh, another. Absolutely. Actually, I've, we've got a workflow thing on it. We should. We can definitely fender to fender sync. Come on now, cheese. <laughs> My friends don't even know what it is. So, um, <laughs> any Linda, any other, you know, like anything else to add on to some of this stuff? I know. What do you think? No, oh, no, it's it's great if you can get the checks. And I mean, there, how about Zion Bank? Somebody said they use Zion Bank. I, I have a. Oh, we can build it. We just we just yeah. need to build out these connections. We just it's yeah. not hard. I mean, once we we have a process, we just need uh, to work with somebody to, to get it, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we start building the connections. Start pulling banks from Zion's. 
I know in the past you used to be able to, that was one of my selling features when I used to get clients on when you have a bank that even QuickBooks couldn't connect to. And I would just reach out to you. You had like a small fee and, and you were connecting to some of the yeah. Yeah. oddball banks. Do you still do that? Yeah, we do. We do. Okay. We try to control it. But yeah, we, we still do. That's cool. It, just always remember like when it comes to that stuff, when supply and demand, when there's one offs, if it's a situation like that, that's where like you could do a fee. But also remember, it requires somebody to maintain those connections. Yeah. Just like every other software app out there, every time you write some code, somebody has to keep looking over the code to make some sure somebody else didn't put something in the way of that code. Right. Or the bank that didn't was, change a button <laughs> or move a button. Change a or... button, change a word, anything. Uh, yeah. Change the URL. Um, you'll be surprised when you start to see what how the banks work. Um, it's pretty complicated. You know, uh, the the website looks pretty nice and clean. But behind the scenes, it's really sophisticated yeah. Yeah. and good for them. You know, that's the way it should be. So as we get ready to close down here, I actually have a special uh, slide I'm going to put up that you're offering a special coupon discount code for our members. But I wanted to ask everybody again in the comments, uh, both places, if you learned something new about bank fees that you just didn't realize before, please let us know. I mean, this has been something I've been extremely passionate about and Linda's had to hear me complain about forever. Um, I'd love to know if you guys learned something new and if you've got more questions, please ask them and we can follow up on that too. Um, uh, bank feeds is, is essentially just to, to close off. I mean, it's the source of all, what would into it, what would QuickBooks be without bank feeds? What would zero be without bank feeds? What would, I mean, imagine you said, here's QuickBooks, but no bank feeds. We're turning off bank feeds. No one would use it. So how many, how many people moved to QuickBooks online because of the bank feeds? I mean, because desktop ones weren't really great before Venture Sync, obviously. But um, and then I remember it was a few years ago, QuickBooks Connect and listening to Sasan talk about AI and, and it's going to come through the bank feeds, right? The banks are the bank feeds are learning how we code things. And that's that's your future. So, I mean, this is stuff that's going to be wrong for a while, for sure. It's really and it, it's 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 the way. Yeah, I mean. Um, and the more stable and the, the better focus we are on, on bank feeds, the better, the quicker you can get your job done. Uh, you're not, you know, essentially, it's like, hey, you're not paid to call the client and say, give me, you know, token. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. And two-factor authentication is not going away. Oh, my God. It's only going the, the complete other way, even more strict, even more stringent. You it's going to get monitoring. You, you logged in, I was talking to bank, you logged in like twice. Oh, okay, token. You know, they're monitoring how long you, you know, how, how many times you log in in a day. So it's just IP going to addresses to too, what? right? They're even like, they're looking at IP addresses. If like, if you're coming from different IP addresses. So if, if the business owner logs in and then the accountant from a different place, mm -hmm. the institutions are seeing all that stuff and, and it's it, and, they're it. and they're shutting and they're, the way they protect themselves is through a token. Yeah. So, so the Ledger Sync website, uh, again, go shoot, you know, go over there, schedule up for a demo itself. When you're getting set up, use the special promo code QBCL. QBCL will get you an extra 20% off okay. um, uh, special for our group. Maurice, this is best, is this best contact information for you? Yep. So email, he loves email, I don't, uh, phone number. Email Twitter. Matt. <laughs> And oh, we have uh, chat on our website, so you can always chat with us on our website. Exactly. So as we uh, get ready to kind of close down here, before I do that, one, I want to share one little kind of tip verbally with everybody. When you're dealing with multi-factor authentication with banks, one of the things that we've done at Parkway that really helped with a lot of this is we, have, we use a VoIP phone system, Dialpad, and we set up an extra line on there. It's our security phone line. And when we go and we register for financial institutions and we have uh, an email and a phone number so you can get a text message, we've set it up to where we use that number because anybody in our team can get the text message from Dialpad right on there. We also have a back-end support team that's external and we've set it up with an integration with Slack. So it will take that text message and push it immediately into a Slack channel. So they, anybody on our team can make a request to access and instantaneously still get the, the um, security token, put it in and be able to move forward without bugging us middle of the night or whenever. So and it's a really- a plug too for Lysio. Like Lysio has a page with a login. So if you get your accountant login, 
But another thing that we do is we have a set set of answers for those questions that you have to answer. You don't want, I don't want people to know who my first cat was and all of them my first pet was, right? I don't want to be letting that out because you're trying to keep your data secure. So if you can get like your team to have, this is the answers to all the questions all the time so that they have that in place. It's just another way. And then with Lysia, with Lysia we have a place to put the, put the answers and so that the team, if they log in and things get broken and have to redo it, you know. Have to I'm making a, a connection between Maurice with LedgerSync and Lysia. I'm, oh, I'm that sure. would be amazing. Cause you know what? You could store all that stuff there. Oh, it would be incredible. Yeah, that's the plan. Yep. So if everybody is a list, anybody who's using Lysia, mention this over to Chris and Allison, you know, and, yeah. and to Lindsay and all that, so. Tell them Linda sent you. <laughs> exactly. Maurice, thank you so much for joining us. Any uh, last things you want to add before we kind of show who's coming up next week? No, uh, we're, we're, you know, we'll, work, we'll continue to work harder and, and deliver and make sure you know, I'm really, really, really focused on bank stability more than, than anything else, making sure that it's stable because, you know, if it's not stable, they you know, really have nothing. So let's make sure that we, we work with the banks and make it as stable and, and, you know, the the most we can make it set and forget it, you know that that's kind of the goal add the bank don't worry about it just get your bank feeds and you know spend your time on on other things that are more profitable and better for the business bank feeds you know, are just a necessary evil what's cool worried because i've known you for several years to that guy and uh, <laughs> um i never knew the story about how you i love hearing the app developer story of how they're at i mean i didn't know that that you were trying to get yeah, that's that a cool a lot story. Of money that I had to provide to the IR. Yeah, so that's yeah, passionate about your. You know, I love app developers that are passionate about their, Great, their app too. It's important, and you're always trying to change it. So that's cool. Maurice is one of those people out there. I put, I proudly put my name on. He's yeah, an Maurice amazing, is an awesome gentleman. guy. So except that you introduced me to him, but other than that, you're a great guy. <laughs> So coming up um, next week, uh, my good, good friend Greg is going to be joining us as our co-host for next week. Nerd um, out. What? Nerd out. Of course. Of course. Um, and we're going to, also, well, I also wanted to share Linda. So uh, the week after that, your is going to be uh, the host the next week. But I wanted to real quickly, Linda, would you, oops. Would you real quickly um, give you a little shout out for what you're doing with your accountants, the Accountants Law Lab? The accountants Law Lab, uh, we are going to dive into how to scale your business, grow it. We've got a lot of members that are like we're overworked and they can't they can't go any more because they're working seven days a week and they want to grow. So we're going to talk about outsourcing and hiring and all that. It's a lot of fun. And, and yeah, so if anybody wants to join us, find awesome. me. Thank you for joining us uh, this week, Linda. Maurice, again, thank you so much. And to everybody that's watching, here's wishing you all a very successful week. Bye, guys. Bye.